Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the next in my series of tutorials for creating aircraft in 3D Studio Max. Uh, today we're going to uh, show you how to create a rudder, and this will basically introduce you to the concept of cutting one shape out of another. On my screen here, what you see is basically a very basic, simple uh, vertical tail. And so what we're going to end up doing is we're going to end up cutting a movable rudder out of it. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at our left view and we're going to go up to create a shape and a line. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to draw the very basic rudder shape. Now in our uh, previous tutorial for the wing we used a smooth and a bezier. Uh, that's because we wanted curved uh, corners. In this case here we don't. We want sharp corners so you select corner for both, for drag type and initial type. So we would start at the beginning point and you don't start in here, you start outside and that will be, I will show you why in a minute. So select that, go into uh, some point inside which is the shape of your rudder, come on down here, select it again and come here and then come up to close it off and say yes to close spline. Now if we look at our perspective, uh, our perspective view, we have the basic rudder shape. And uh, I'll put that to full screen just to show you. And there we go, we've got our basic rudder shape. <coughs> now your rudder is going to change, of course, depending on your reference drawing. But that's basically how we start. Then what we've got to do is create a three-dimensional shape out of that two-dimensional. It's the same thing as before. Go to modify and extrude. And as you can see, we have uh, a very little tiny bit of extruding done. So we, uh, we want obviously a little bit more than that. So you go up to a mount and move your, your mouse up a bit. And now we have a three-dimensional rudder shape. The uh, b basic uh, big point about this is to make sure that the dark green shape intersects fully the light green. So what we would do in that case is select and move and move it so that it intersects it properly. The basic concept of what we're going to do here is basically use, uh, to use a real-world analogy, is to use a cookie cutter. The dark green here is, the, uh, is the, the cutter itself, and the light green is your cookie dough. And that's essentially what we're going to do, is we're going to cut it out. It's going to be a little bit more complicated than that, but that's the basic idea. So now what we're going to do is go up to Create. So instead of Shapes, we're going to go to Geometry, and we're going to go to Compound Objects. And in this case, what we want to do is a Boolean cut. And we're going to pick operand B. Basically, what that's saying is that pick, pick your cookie dough. So in this case, we'll select the light green. And as you can see, we cut out the shape. Now, here's the thing. What you want the end result to be is you want the hole in your vertical tail. But you also want the actual rudder shape. So here's how you go about doing that. First of all, our operation at currently was select B from A. Well, actually, what we actually want is an intersection. That, what that will do is that will leave over any parts from our original two objects that are intersecting each other. So that leaves the rudder itself. So that looks not too bad there. Now, how do we go about saving this? Well, the easiest way is to go File and Export Selected. And we're going to select this as rudder. Uh, actually, I'm just going to put it on my desktop here because I've got an aircraft there that I don't want to screw up. So save it as, we'll call it rudder dot, dot 3ds file. Save it. Click OK to preserve max textures. Now, press Control z to back up so that our hole is back. So now we've got our hole. We've got our rudder actually saved. So now what we do is we would go File and Import. Go to our desktop. Make sure we got 3DS selected. And find our rudder.3ds file, which is right there. And merge object to current scene. Make sure convert units is left off. And call it rudder. And now what we have, as you can see, we actually have two objects and they perfectly line up, which is exactly what you want. Now, if we were to select the actual rudder object, we could, of course, rotate this, and it will rotate independently. Now, uh, the reason I got to rotate there is because you will notice one thing. It doesn't rotate properly. Uh, I've decided to introduce a concept to you today to how to get this thing to actually uh, or, uh, to rotate properly for you. 
So press, so move it someplace, press control Z to put it back. So now what we're going to do is, this ball that you see here is called the pivot point. When you rotate this object, it rotates around the pivot point. That obviously telling us that our pivot point is not proper. So what we would do in that case is go to hierarchy, effect pivot only, click on center to object. Now it's a little bit better. Now if we take off effect pivot only and rotate, it's a little bit closer to what we wanted. Not perfect yet. So what we've actually got to do now, leave it there, press control Z to go back, is actually move our pivot point. Now this is where it becomes very important. We've got to change our reference coordinate system to local so that everything lines up and click on move. We'll go to the left view by clicking, selecting L. Move it so that it lines up in our left view with this angle that comes down here because that's what we want to rotate around. Now there's one issue of course. That means that that's the, that's the pivot point. Unfortunately our rotation angle is actually straight up and down which is not what we want. We actually want it at this angle right here so you simply select it and rotate it like this and line up this arrow with this angle. Take off our pivot point and now we'll go back to this point again and turn off the grid. Now when we rotate it, it rotates around that point and it doesn't jut out. And that's the basic concept. Now this becomes even more important when you do an aileron or flaps on a wing because your wing is swept and it is also bent which means that you've got to adjust several different angles. Uh, I won't show you how to do that, that's something you'll have to experiment how to do, but it uses the basic concept of looking at the left, front, and top views uh, so that you can get all your angles correctly. But right now, as you can see, this thing rotates around the proper pivot point. You could now import this into uh, one of your games, be it Strike Fighters or Flight Sim 2002. So that's basically how to create a rudder and how to adjust its pivot point so that it uh, pivots around the right area. So have a nice day.